Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and on this episode we have a special Albuquerque-based extravaganza featuring Ethan from Cameradactyl. He's created his own Afghan box camera, a form of photographic capture that one might say is sort of the genesis of instant photography, where virtually all elements of the development process occur inside the camera, producing a one-of-a-kind paper print. These unbelievable cameras and the artists wielding them are still out in the streets of several countries around the world, though dwindling by the minute as shooters with modified cameras hand out Instax wide shots to passing tourists. But nothing can quite top the artisanal quality of this unique process, which, like Polaroid pack film, was used for everything from ID card photos in Kabul to tourist street portraits in Belarus. These cameras produced the first and sometimes only images of people in the Middle East from the late 1800s through the early 20th century. And then there's Ethan with his Albuquerque box camera. You may recognize Ethan from another wild camera and process showcase on this channel when he drove a massive handmade 20x24 camera from the ABQ to Brooklyn and guided us through the RA4 reversal process, generating massive one-off positive color portraits. A year later, I had to open up an In An Instant residency program to fund unique episodes of In An Instant shot in Brazil, the Philippines, and the US. Ethan has been cooking up this incredible camera ever since, and thus we have the fourth installment of the residency series going inside another of Ethan Moses's wacky machines of artistic creation. Let's do it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. This is the Albuquerque box camera. It's a type of lab camera or Afghan box camera that my friend Joe Van Cleve and I made to shoot direct positives. It makes instant paper prints that are like a one-of-a-kind wet Polaroid. Let's take a look at how it works by making a direct positive black and white reversal print on regular photo paper. I built this version of the Albuquerque box camera with a removable side panel and turned my whole shop into a dark room so that I could make this video. Normally all of this would happen in the dark. First thing I'm going to do is open the shutter and open the aperture so that I can focus, then open the back door to look through at the focusing screen. Then I'm going to look at my subject and pull the focusing screen forward and back until I find the correct focus and set a memory clip on the focusing rails. Then I can close the shutter and the aperture and the lens in the back of the camera and through the magic of having my studio be a dark room, open the side panel and see what we're doing in the dark. So the first thing I'm going to do is push the focusing screen forward. Then I'm going to flip up in the paper safe and grab a piece of paper. Then I come up to the focusing screen and flip down the screen itself, which is held in by a magnet, and place the glossy or emulsion side forward, uh, align it with my thumb and other fingers, and gently get the thing to magnet closed with a piece of paper in place. Then I slide the focusing screen back to my memory clip that I placed on the rail, and I have a loaded piece of paper ready to take a picture. I should have taken the meter reading before I got everything ready, but then I emotionally connect with my subject and take a photo. Now comes the part where by the magic of the internet we go back into the dark or back into the dark room. Anyway, I push the thing forward, pull the thing out, you know, the paper, and then I will dip it in each tray in sequential order. I'm going to pull the trays out just so we can see them, but I don't do this in the dark. This is just for you people, because I love you. Okay, so the first one we're going to put the photo in is a regular first developer and now this is going to develop a paper negative where any light hit will turn black and where no light hit will stay white. At this step we're looking for a very dark paper negative. I'm rating this paper at about ISO one and a half to two and a half. Normally for a paper negative I would rate it at about ISO 10 but you've got to do your experiments with your own regular black and white photo paper. Anyway, you can see that this is a pretty dark paper negative here. The next thing we're going to do is instead of stop and fix, we are going to pull this out and stop it in citric acid, which has two purposes. The citric acid stops the development of the paper negative, and it also seems to prime the blacks in the image to be removed later in the hydrogen peroxide bleaching step. 
I like to leave the photo in the citric acid for three and a half to four minutes until it's fully stopped and then expose the image to light to make sure that all of the undeveloped silver salts now form a latent image, an image that is capable of being developed into blacks but is not yet so. We still see a paper negative at this point. I throw it in the hydrogen peroxide and watch it all bleach out to white. What we're left with is removed silver salts where we had a paper negative and a latent image, an image that has potential to be developed in the positives. Visually though, it's all white. The next two steps are kind of boring on camera, but pretty important if you want to get nice, clean, cool tone pictures. I like to rinse the picture in water for about 20 seconds and then put it in hypoclearing agent or sodium sulfite for about three minutes. At that point, I give the picture another rinse and it's ready to go back into the last developer. The positive should come up in a couple of seconds. That's basically it. It's a pretty simple process that takes a little bit of finesse to master. Here's a couple technical details. Um, the developer I'm using is just regular paper developer like Dectol or uh, Kodak Polycontrast developer or really any black and white paper developer. I'm using Aris to grade 2 black and white paper. You can use any enlarging paper. I would recommend an RC paper over a fiber-based paper and a glossy one or an uncoated one at that. It gives you a little bit sharper acuity on the negative or positive eventually. But really, this is something you should play around with and choose something that suits your artistic goals. The citric acid that I'm using is Ball brand, but really any citric acid will do, and I basically try and make a super saturated solution, so there's no too much citric acid that you can dissolve into the bath. For the hydrogen peroxide bleaching step, I'm using Crystal Clear V40 Hydrogen Peroxide Hair Bleach. I buy mine at Sally Beauty Supply here in Albuquerque, but usually a hair salon supply store, or even if you're willing to pay the extra shipping charges on Amazon for hazmat stuff, you can usually find it. You can buy sodium sulfide or hypoclearing agent from any online photochemical supplier like Freestyle, B&H, Adorama, Bostic & Sullivan, etc. You can do this process in just about any camera. It works out really nice in large format cameras, and in particular, if you'd like to do one in this Albuquerque box camera, I'll be making a batch for a limited time only on cameradactyl.com. Oh, what, what are you doing in this box? Oh, this is kind of interesting now. Did you make it just for me? Uh, oh, well, is this stuff I'm supposed to drink? Oh, this looks like lemonade. Ah!